Hallelujah, yes. On Calvary, the Savior, like me. Let's all sing with him. I heard him bow his groan. The precious blood of the Tony. company, you know? It's like, wow, man. I can't wait, you know? Come on, sing that verse again, because that's basically what I'm headed for, is that mansion in glory. And I heard about a mansion that was built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold the crystal sea and I heard about angels singing and the ocean and the story some sweet day I'll see 
song of victory. Amen, yes. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Stop me, and he bothered me with his redeeming blood. He loved me now, I knew him, and all the love is to him. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Thank you, Lord. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen, amen, amen. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this great night. Oh, Father, the Jesus, oh, God, that you share each other's testimonies through song, through prayer, through praises. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And to that, I'll go with uh, Country boy, I never had much money. I never knew the word luxury. But in heaven, I know I'll have a mansion. Where the streets of gold were paved just for me. Listen to this. It won't be long till Jesus comes. Amen. I've never been to heaven, and I know it, it won't be long. It won't be long till Jesus comes. Well, I'm on my way to heaven, and I won't, it won't be long. If the Lord should come today, I'll Go to meet him. Amen. Yes. Well, I hate to be when them sinners that left behind would start to pray. They'll be screaming and crying for the rocks to fall upon them. You know what? They'll weep and pray. But God's going to say, it's too late. It won't be long to Jesus come. Amen. I've never been to heaven, and I know I feel at home. It won't be long. To Jesus comes. Well, I'm on my way to heaven, and I know it won't be long. I'm gonna sing this verse again. If the Lord should come today, I'll go to meet him. I hate to be when them sinners that left behind would start to pray. They'll be crying 
for the rock to fall upon them. Oh, they weep and pray. He'll say, I'm sorry it's too late. It won't be long, long the Jesus come. Thank you, Lord. I've never been to heaven, but I know well here at home. It won't be long, long to Jesus come. How many here are on the way to heaven? Yes, Lord. And you know it won't be long. I'm on my way to heaven. And I know it won't be long. If you're not ready, Better get ready for you coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. That's right, brother. That song has a message. Amen. Oh, yes. yes. Need to be ready. Bless him tonight, Lord. Bless him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. You know, every song you look in here, it's always talking about my way to heaven, you know. It's like, every song is, you know, I'll meet you by the river, you know, the Crystal River in heaven. Anybody have any favorites? Because I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I kind of follow the... You know, because he lives. Is it, is it in here? No, it's not in the. It's not in the. Uh, it's not in here. Is it in his book? Because he lives. It's in his book. It might be in his book. Okay, what's his book? It's newer, so. Yeah, yeah, newer his book. Ah, <laughs> ah. songs uh, bring you way back, you know, and it's like, Amen. Uh, what about Amazing Grace? If I know the words, I, you know, I know my own words, but uh, I write my own stuff. Uh, well, why don't you sing it, brother, and we'll follow along with you. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll try it.
last verse. Hallelujah, yes. praise your name. Yes. 
We thank yes. and praise your name, Lord, because you yes. are the name above yes. all names. Lord, yes. I yes. said you are the name above all names. Yes. You are the Lord yes. of Lords. You are King of Kings. You are the majesty yes. of all. You are everything. Hallelujah. You are everything, Lord. You are everything in our lives, our soul and our mind. Oh, hallelujah. You are also the lily of the valley. You are the bright morning star. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be your name, for you are the name above all names. Hallelujah. Oh, may and grace how sweet the sound and say a wreck like you you and me think about it you were once lost but he but he just what he found you that's what Jesus does when he's looking for his sheep. Yes, Lord. That's why we say praise. We praise your name. Yes, we oh, do. how sweet. Oh, how yes. sweet the sound. Oh, that faith. Oh, praise. I once was lost, I was a feeble yes, sheep, but then he always, he finds to take you back to the flood. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, oh, and Lord, Lord, we thank you, praise your name, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. When I'm tough, all I see, every way of me, and the bright clouds. Won't let the sun shine through. And a voice seemed to say, There it goes. Shall there be a brighter day? Don't allow the storm to hide. Sweet heaven to you. You know what? Cause you got. One more valley, one more hill, and you got one more trial, one more tear. Thank you, Lord. One more curve in life's road, and maybe one more mile to go. You can't lay down. You're heavy low when you get home. Remember, don't let, remember this. I always remember this. Don't let Satan see your tears. Learn to hide to your tears. Hold your head up high and give the world you must be faithful all the way. It will be worth it 
awesome days, it's all gonna be over after a while. Cause you got one more valley, one more hill. And you got one more trial, one more tear. One more curvy light road, maybe one more mile to go. And you can lay down your heavy load when you get it all. You got one more valley, one more hill. One more trial, one more tear, one more let to go, one more mile, don't you know, you can lay down your head and blow when you get home. You can just take off that heavy load Cause you're on your way home Amen, amen, yes Yes Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, precious Lord, for touching my brother Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. All right, I'm going to go off the book here. Thank you, sweet Lord. Yes. I know I do this a lot, but uh, I kind of miss the drums and kind of miss everything else, but you know what? I can hear those drums in a I got a compliment right now. I got the horns and everything can be compliment. Angels are complimental, you know? Amen. Amen. They're, they're Amen. playing drums. And, uh, yes. And they're playing the strings. And, Angels all around us, brother. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So gonna... Spiritual band. Spiritual choir. Spiritual. All right. You guys up there? <laughs> it's an E. Praise the Lord. Beautiful song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. There's nothing <laughs> worth more. Don't ever come close There's nothing compared You're living out Your presence flows I've tasted and seen The sweetest of love and my heart beats some free And my shame is undone Presence, Lord Holy Spirit, Thou art well Come here, come for Place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To overcome. You know what? You're in the presence of the Lord. You're in the presence of. 
in the presence of the Lord. You're in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, I would welcome in this place. Oh, yeah, come on now, Holy Spirit, I would welcome in this place. Let the floodgates of heaven flood us now. Let the cloud birds come in and you see a cloud. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Is lurking in this place. Holy Spirit, and you have amazing grace. Oh, 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 in this place, Holy Spirit, I want to welcome in this place. I want to welcome. Holy Spirit, our welcome. Holy Spirit, come on now. Oh, there's nothing worth more. Don't ever come close. There's nothing compared. To the Holy Ghost, His presence is within. I tasted and seen the sweetest of love, and my heart comes free. And my shame is undone The presence of the Lord Can you feel Him? Can you feel Him? Oh, Holy Spirit Oh, can you feel Him? Oh, yeah Holy Spirit, I would welcome in this place. I would welcome. I would welcome. Can you feel him inside? You know, our souls, I don't know if this sounds, you know, I was, I got, I kept thinking about the Holy Spirit and about our spirit. 
Let's do. You know, you know when you get the, I don't know. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have your spirit just wants to reach out to God, you know. And then your flesh kind of resists them. That's when you get the shakes. It's like a resistance. Your spirit is trying to pull out your body to reach the head, to reach our Father. That's why we shake. We're like this. We have no control of our body. That's how I feel. When he touches me, that's what I feel when he wants me to shout. You can feel his power. It's like electricity. Amen? I'll tell you right now. When you feel the spirit within and it starts moving and your body starts resisting it, your flesh starts resisting it because your spirit wants to break through your body. The power of the Holy Spirit. You know, it, there's a, and it recalls about the fire. You know, it's said, I die will baptize you with water. But the one that comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen? The fire that burns within, that consumes the fiery darts. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, it's like, I can just picture that flame. You know what? God is so radiant. He is so powerful. He's nothing but pure radiant fire. You know, he could have come down as a bush, but he couldn't come down the bush. His power is so strong that he came down as a flaming fire. A fiery bush. He couldn't talk to no one because he's so plain. And they said that light of son of man. When God, when Saul was down there, I believe he's seen God. But you know what? He is so bright and so radiant that he went, he went blind. Because he's seen the sight of God. That's what I feel in my heart. That when we feel his power, you feel that warmness in your body. That's the fire. That's within. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give it to Brother Ray now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Everybody's uh, sanctuary. Let's all stand before you go stand. There you go.
just look up to those clouds and talk to us. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a Sometimes we can pray, sometimes we can sing, sometimes we can even preach and teach, but if God isn't there, if God isn't there, it's always lacking something. How many people That's understand right. that? Amen. It's always lacking Hallelujah. something, praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Lord. If you will, get your Bibles out tonight. If you're able to lift them up, lift them up. If you're able to stand, stand. Shake them around a little bit. And as I always say, there's no dust in these Bibles because we use our Bibles, praise God. And repeat after me with conviction in our heart. This is my Bible. This is the truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. This is the word of God. Jesus is the word. This is the good news. The good report. The one son of doctrine. This is what I believe in. Stand on. Live by and trust in. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Preaching's already been done tonight through the songs, praise God. Amen. Preaching's already been done, praise God. If you will, tonight, I'm going to read a scripture before we get into the message. I'd like to have you turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 1, starting with verse 17. Say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Chapter 1 of Ephesians, starting with 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, this was a prayer, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Listen to this in 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I love that 19. <laughs> and what is the exceeding greatness, Brother Don, of his, his power, power towards Amen. us who believe according to the working of his, his mighty, mighty power? power. We have no power of our own, Sister Mary. It all comes from God. Yes. We have no power at all, Brother Tim. It all comes from God. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Tonight, my message is going to be called Filters. I want you to turn to Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, if you will, verse 8. Listen to every word in this verse that I'm about to read. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. 
It starts out with a warning. Beware. The Apostle Paul put, beware. This is a warning. When someone says, beware, it means look up, be careful, stop, beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily, speaking of Jesus. Amen. In him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness, Brother Gary, of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. Complete in who? Complete in Jesus, which is the head of all principality and power. The verse we're going to talk about tonight is verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Sometimes when I see a word and I don't have an understanding, what does that word mean? What? What does the word spoil mean? I know how to spoil a child. I've, I've, I've spoiled a few of my grandkids. And I know Sister Mary's probably spoiled every one of her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren over the years. As many of you have too. We know what that means, but that's just not what that word means. It's not what that word means it's at all. Be aware, at least any man spoil you. It's a, it's a military term. It's a military term, which means be careful that the enemy does not have triumph over you. That's right. Be Amen. careful that you are not made a captive. Mm -hmm. Be careful that you are not enslaved or become a slave. Be careful that you do not become a prey. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hmm. I say my message tonight was about filtering. Sometimes in our spiritual walk and our spiritual growth, we get to a point, Brother Tim, that we get to a point of this. We really think that we know everything. We get to a point of becoming teenagers. You know, when we're little children, we want to learn. My little granddaughter, she's learning how to climb and get over fences and everything else and how to climb up in the cupboards now. She's, she's learning. Little Damien is learning, and Stephen is learning, and I know your grandchildren. It's so good to see the kids, and if you don't have children, your nieces and nephews, you see them grow and grow. I shared this with somebody earlier in the week, when my oldest daughters, and, and in fact, when they got to a point of becoming teenagers, they, they actually thought Dad got stupid a little bit. Listen to what I'm saying. Grandma and Dad, they, they just don't have the sense anymore. They just, they don't, they don't have, understand. Well, you don't understand, Dad. How many times have you heard that, Brother Gary, yeah. when they were teenagers? Yes. You don't understand. You, you're not with it. You know, that's the old way of doing things. And, you know, you don't understand how anything works anymore. As my daughters have gotten older in life, I find out that I become wiser. Because they get older in life, they start to realize that they don't have all the answers. As we get out of our adolescent and teen, year, teen years, we find out we don't have all the answers. That's right. We don't have all the answers at all. Mm -hmm. Mark Twain was quoted, uh, quoted once saying, you know what? My father was as dumb as there can be a father. Yeah. But as I got to become an older man, I found out my father was very, very, very smart. Yeah, exactly. As we get older, we start to realize that we don't have all the answers. Yeah, that's it. There was a time in my life I became a teenager not in the flesh, but in my Christian walk. And I thought I had a lot of the answers. I thought I knew what was right or wrong. And, and I remember one time someone doing something in church that they ought not to be doing. And, and I didn't have any filters back then. I'm going to explain what that filter is in a second. And I started to say, you know what? This person is, is doing things in the church. They're, they're preaching and they're playing and, and they're doing things that they ought not to do. And I, I, I wanted to point them out. And I wanted to point them out, Brother Tim, and say, you know what? That's wrong. That's wrong. A child of God shouldn't do that. I knew that, and I was right. But God convicted me of something. He convicted me of something, Brother Don. He started to bring me to the scriptures that let the wheat and the tares grow up together, praise God. That's the word. We've got we to understand the wheat and tares need to grow up. Yes, people do do things wrong in church. Yes, they are. Maybe not even right. Maybe they are a terror themselves without even realizing it. A DD, a deceived deceiver. They deceive themselves, Brother Gary. But I was not going to be the one to pull them up. God stopped me. 
Because as you point out somebody else's faults, there's actually three fingers pointing back at you. Mm -hmm. We all have faults at self, praise God. And you know what? If we point somebody else's fault out, you know what? It gets people that are backing that person against you. It also causes division within the church, within the house of God. God does not want division. He does not want confusion in the church. So what do we do when we see things like that? We need to pray for that person. We need to pray that they come to the right senses. We need to pray that they, they get back right with the Lord. I've seen it done with pastors. I've seen it done with ministers. I've seen it done with the lay people. Praise God. We've all been there. Praise God. So we pray for them. But we have to have filters. I'm going to explain what that's about itself. When I was a young man, I shared this with you, that I had an uncle that I still admire greatly. And, and because he was, I'm going to say this, he was preaching for many, many years, but he was still growing in the Lord. He wasn't where he's at today. He was at a different position. But he fought that he had all the goods and, 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 and he could say what he wanted to say at times. And, and I remember I brought a, my girlfriend who later became my wife into his household. And I, and I was not a Christian at the time, and I'm not proud of it. But I had this young lady live with me for several months before we got married, Brother Gary. I brought her into my home. Was it the right thing to do? But as I entered my uncle's house, he told me something on the way out. He says, never come back to my house again unless you two are married and never bring that girl back into the house unless you're married. I was crushed. I was starting to go to church at that time and I quit going to church. I felt that God didn't love me anymore. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm sinning. And I was sinning. And he didn't say it out of hatred to me. He probably said it to save my soul. But it was how he had said it. Let me, let me explain something to you. I want you to hear this today. We got some stinking thinking in every church that's out there, including our own, because of things that we were taught. The things that we were taught. The things that we were taught in our early years in church. A few years later, not even a few years later, a few months later, I had another uncle, great uncle, from Morso, Indiana. He came knocking on my door, and he knocked, and he walked in. He's one of these guys. He never waited for he answered the door. He just walked right on in. He walks in. I'm sitting there half-dressed at the kitchen table on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and my wife is sitting there half-dressed, or wife-to-be, sitting at the table half-dressed. And he walks in, and he starts talking about his trip from Indiana up and, and how he did this and did that. And I remember he was showing off a new gun he had. And back then, this is going back 40-some years, 45 years, and he carried a gun back then, and he's just talking about the love of Christ and, and, and what God has done and changed his life. And he talked about how God loves me and how God loved my, my wife to be at that time. And he just talked about the precious love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not once did he condemn us because he understood something. He had enough wisdom. We read about God's wisdom. He had enough wisdom to know that when you're in the flesh, when you're a sinner man or woman, you're going to do what sinner men and women do. That's right. You're just going to do what they do. But he looked at me with love and he said, you know what? I love you and God loves you and Jesus loves you. And he says, I hope you come to know the Lord. I know one day. And he says, you don't have to make this thing right one day, but I love you. And he went over and gave me a hug. He was a hugger. And he hugged my wife to be at that time. And, and I saw, what is the difference between this man and this man? Two holy men of God. Right. Two holy men of God. I share this with the church many a time when we have, we have somebody coming into church and maybe they, they don't show up for a while. We see them months later or maybe even years later and they come in to worship God and to honor God. Brother Don, sometimes we have this feeling, oh, why are they even in the church house? Why are they even here? Praise God. And I found out that sometimes, you know, if it's somebody that we care for and somebody that we like, we... Accept them. But if it's something that we have an ought with someone, we don't accept them. See, God is not a respecter of person. Unfortunately, we are a respecter of person. A young lady had come into our church a few years ago, and she's standing next to one of the older people in church, and the older person in church said, look at those people up there, that person. They hardly come to church at all. And look at that young man and how he's dressed. He shouldn't be dressed like that in the house of God. God, hell. 
the young lady standing next to him, she knew that he did not know her life. He assumed that because at one time she was part of this church, that she was a-okay with the Lord. And at that point in her life, she wasn't. And she said, you know what? This is what's keeping me out of church and other churches, and including her own. People prejudging and judging someone in church. This person stayed out of church for a long time. We have to be careful with what we say or do. But you know what? I'm not blaming That's the person right. that said it. I'm not blaming the man that said it. That's how he was taught. Right. That's how he was taught. If he doesn't know any better, that's all he knows. So I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming him at all. That's how he was taught. So what happens is that we got to learn to filter out some of this old way of thinking. Does it line up with the Word of God? If Jesus was here today, he would be eating with the sinner, man, or woman. Mm -hmm. If Jesus was here today, Brother Don, he'd be walking with them. That's if right. Jesus was here today, he'd be going to their house to the yes. sinner, man, or woman. Yep. Sometimes we just want to be around certain people and only certain people that we feel comfortable with. I believe that we should be around people that we don't feel comfortable with. I believe we should be around the, the dope people and the, and the sinner men and women and, and, and the ones that are doing all the despicable things. They need to feel the love of God. They need yeah. to see the love of God. They need to experience the love of God. Right. Jesus, if he only spoke to the ones that were good, guess what? He wouldn't have had one sermon in the Bible. He wouldn't even come. He came for the lost. He came for the sinner man or woman. He didn't come for the ones that were healed. He didn't come. The healed don't need a doctor. If you're hurting, you need a doctor. This is why when we opened up this church, I said, this is an emergency room. It's a hospital for those yeah. that need immediate help. Praise God. I want the despicable people here. I want the unloved people here. I want the unlearned people here. Maybe they can get something and they can learn something. Sometimes we need to get off our, what I call, my mother used to call our high horse itself. We have to remember we don't have all the answers. We have to remember that Jesus is the answer, praise God. So I was talking about filters. Sister Mary makes probably, I don't know how many pots of coffee a week in there. But I bet you she makes at least one, if not a hundred and one. And she puts a filter in that coffee canister. And that filter is in there to keep the grounds, the stuff we don't want in our coffee, to keep it away Right. from this sweet beverage that we're going to drink right. called coffee. I don't like coffee grounds. That's why we use a filter. But sometimes I need a filter to stop the old way of thinking. Yes, Jesus. I had somebody come in a while back, and I'm yes. looking at them, and, and as a pastor, I can't say everything that comes to my mind sometimes. I'm saying, man, I don't like the way this person's dressed. And it wasn't a woman, it was a man. I believe that we should dress up a little bit at church. I don't think you have to go out and get a suit. But you know what? I, I want someone coming with clean clothes. I want someone looking good. Amen. And then God convicted me of that. God convicted me of that. I remember being at another church. We had a young lady walked in with five children. And she had hot pants up to here. Hot shorts, whatever you call them. If you remember back in the days, the Daisy Dukes Daisy they used Duke. to call yeah. them. So. And people started talking about her. She, she's a woman in the house of God. Why would she come in like that? Well, she didn't know any better. She didn't know any better. But instead of the sisters embracing her and telling her, Sister, we love you, but this is how, you know, you might want to dress a little bit. you got five kids, and this is just what we do. Instead yes. of doing it with love and doing it with, mm. with grace. Glory. Someone God. sat up at the, uh, uh, up, I'm not going to mention who, you, you know who it is, said, you know what? That woman should never come in dressed like that. She looks like a little hussy. The woman left church and never came back with her five kids. We get to a point of wanting. Listen to what I'm saying to you. This is important. we got to stop some of this negative thinking. People are always going to not be the type of Christian that you would like them to be. But at the same time, people may be looking at your life thinking you're not the type of Christian that you should be itself. For every finger pointed, there's three fingers back. And you know what? We were talking about filters. I have to say, Lord, help me get rid of the stuff that I was taught. Help me get rid of all the negativeness and, and, and the prejudging of people. We're to show the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we don't have to put up with nonsense. We don't have to put up with sin. We don't condone that at all. Amen. You know, the church, if there aren't any church services, they find that out. But at the same time, when they come in the church doors, and it doesn't matter if it's here or any door, 
we need to show the grace of God a little bit. Yeah. So I have to get a filter. This is a furnace filter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. If this gets really, really filthy, yeah, the furnace does not work properly. You've got to have air going through it. Yeah. If it gets too filthy and dirty, guess what? Some of that filth will get on through. Yep. Some of the bad will get on through. I have to have a furnace filter for the back of my head because you know what? I'm walking around and guess what happens, brother Brother Don? Lord. All the old stuff starts coming in. They ought to be dressed differently. <laughs> they ought to look differently. They ought to act differently. They ought to do this differently. They're doing wrong and they're doing right. Mm. How many people understand sometimes the ones that we think are doing right are doing wrong and the ones that we think are wrong are doing right? Right. So this 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 stuff starts to filter through. It starts to filter through. And I have to say, Lord, help me change my filter. I don't want the stuff that I've been taught. I don't want the stuff, the condemning stuff that I've learned to come on through. I want people to understand that there's one that can save. My job is not to change anybody. My job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your job is to be a witness out there. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ with your own life. The Bible says there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Lord. Thank you, sweet Lord. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Beware that no man spoil you through philosophy and feign deceit and the traditions after men. Jesus said himself, the traditions of man make the word of God to no effect or no avail. Amen. We do things in church not because it's holy. We do things in church not because God wants us to do it. We do things in church because we think it's right. We do things in church because we feel that this is what God would want. Get into your Bible. Get into your Bible. Yeah. Get into your Bible. Sometimes we think because we've read the Bible that we know the Bible. Sometimes we feel because we have been in church for five years, ten years, fifty years, sixty years, we don't think that we can learn anything else. We know it all. When we get to that point, we're ready to fall. That's right. Listen to what I'm saying. That's right. We have to have a heart of reproof, a heart of rebuke. We have to have a spirit of allowing that to happen. Show me with the Word of God. Show me what does God's Word say. A lot of pastors, a lot of people, sometimes they'll get on my case. They don't have an understanding. I say, take it up with the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Amen. What does the Word of God say? Let the Word of God be your final, your final, your final say-so with everything, everything that we become aware of. Praise God. I want you to turn tonight, if you will, to, to Luke 6.37, if you will. Just turn to Luke 6.37. In your body. Praise God. Luke 6.37. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Yeah, Luke's 37. Luke 6, 37. I preached a few years ago about a critical spirit. I have to be careful of that, Brother Gary, because it's so easy to fall into that trap where we become critical, where I become critical. The Bible says work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Let's live the life that Jesus would live. Let's live the life that he would live. Amen. Here's what 637 says in Luke. Judge not, say judge not. Judge, judge not. not. And ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. Condemn, condemn not. not. And ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be what? Forgiven. Yeah. Forgiven, praise God. I want you to turn to Matthew 7. Thank you, sweet Jesus. 
before we get to Matthew 7, 1, a while back, some people were talking about, was it our church, thank God? We have gossipers in all churches, but it was about another church. And they were talking about a pastor that they thought wasn't doing what he ought to do, as I'm sure people have thought that about myself. And what I brought up to their attention was the fact that you're seeing something and experiencing something for a moment that that person is going through. Whether it be a pastor, whether it be a leader, whether it be a lay person in that church. Sometimes we see somebody just for a moment and we think that that's all there is to them. Sometimes we see people, there's a little church that I, I love dearly and they have about four members, five members right now and, and I'm praying for that church for survival. But sometimes we get people saying, well, they've got to be doing something wrong to only have four people in that church, and sometimes they don't show up. No, maybe the people are going through a transition. Maybe God is doing something with them. So I said, even though that person may be going through something, have you ever gone through something, Brother Don? Have you ever gone through something, mm -hmm. Brother Tim, that, that, that maybe it wasn't the best thing to go through, and, and somebody might think you're, you're doing something wrong? You have troubles in your life. I remember the story about Job. Of, how, how he lost his family and lost all his belongings and all that, lost everything. Satan had taken him away from, from Job, but his, his good friends said, you know what, you must be doing something wrong. God must be punishing you. Or maybe your children did something wrong and God is punishing you and, and took their lives. And he didn't do anything wrong. He was a righteous man. But we go through problems, we go through situations that people see and they feel that, man, something's got to be wrong here. Nothing has to be wrong. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. Maybe you're going through a period of life that's rough right now. Maybe you're not acting right the, the way you need to act. We've all gotten a little crazy at times. But you know what? God is always with us. God will take care of us. The Bible says a, a righteous man may fall seven times. But seven times, Brother Don, he'll get back up. Amen. We have to understand. we got to get some filters on. Say, God, only let you come through. Let your word come through. Yeah. Should, I, should, I, yeah. should I talk about this person? Should I condemn this person? Should I point fingers at this person? Should I make a judgment call about this person? We're not to make a judgment call about anybody or anything. Pray for them. Pray for the tares. Pray for the saints of God. Pray for the lost. Mary used to say it a lot, and I, and I love when she used to say it. She goes, you know what? Uh, God's going to help us catch him, but he's the one that cleans him. It's like Amen. fishing. We're going to help catch him. You know, we put that Holy Ghost out there, praise God. You know, we're God's mouthpiece. We're his hands and feet. We're a walking Bible. We're a walking testimony, praise God. Amen. But you know what? It's God that's going to clean him up, praise God. We want him cleaned up right now. We want to catch him like this, get him cut and cleaned up perfect. He don't work like that. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes it may not be much. Sometimes it may be years, praise God. I look at these people sometimes, and man, they've been in the church 42 years. It seems like they should know better. But for one reason or not, they've never been taught. If you've never been taught, or if you get to a point of having an unteachable spirit, listen to what I'm saying. You get to a point of having an unteachable spirit, you're not going to take advice or criticism or reproof or rebuke from anybody. Even God himself. Why? I know it all. I know it all. I know it all. I never want to get to that point. I want to have a teachable spirit. I want to have a teachable spirit. I want you all to have a teachable spirit. The message today is filtered. I pray that tonight when you go home and the next time we come to church anywhere, here or elsewhere, say, Lord, put a filter on me. I only want your word coming through. Yeah. I don't want the traditions of man to come through. I, I, I don't want the traditions and the, and the rudiments of this, this world to come on through. I don't want what I was taught 20, 30, 40 years ago in church to come through. I want only you to come through itself. Yeah. Because some of the things that I was taught in church were just enough to mess me up. Some of the things I was taught in church was not of God. It was a man-made rule. Some of the things I was taught, and I'm not putting down any church. I'm putting down the traditions of man. Why do we do what we do? 
Why do we say what we say? Why do we finger point when we ought not to finger point? There was a young lady in church today Thank you, Jesus. about eight years ago. Her and another young lady. Mary knows the young lady, the other young lady very well. They came to me crying. Crying. Because somebody pointed a finger and said, you girls are wrong. And blah, 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 blah. Do you know that when we crush somebody's spirit like that, because we think we're right, and we're holier than thou, that is a spirit, not just being a critical spirit, it's a spirit of Sadducee and Pharisee. You have a spirit, and the Sadducees and Pharisees walked around with their nice clothes, they walked around with their rings, they walked around with their garments, and they never could do anything wrong, right? They wanted everyone to bow down and kiss their ring. They wanted everybody to bow down to them. They wanted everyone to respect them. Didn't have anything to do. And they would finger point and, and tell everybody they're never, never going to make it in a place that we call heaven. But then here comes a rebel. Here comes a man that didn't look like, <laughs> he just looked like any other man. Wasn't there anything outstanding about his features? Here comes a man walking with sandals. He didn't even have a donkey at that time. Here comes a man that just had his normal clothes on, everyday clothes. Here comes a man that started to walk on the scene. And he started to preach about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Here comes a man. <laughs> Here comes a man that spoke like no other man. Here comes a man that loved the sinner man or woman. Here comes a man that ate with the, with the wine bibbers. Here comes a man that ate with the prostitutes. And the ones that you meant to go through. Here comes a man that, that later on saved a woman from being stoned to death. Amen. Because he said, he that's without sin cast the first stone. Yep. And the Bible said all the men, starting with the oldest to the youngest, started to drop their stones and they walked away. Amen. There was one that could have condemned her. And that was himself. He had the right to do it because he was sinless. He had no sin. But he didn't pick up the rock to throw at her. She had a, she had a divine encounter that day. She, her life was saved, and it wasn't just her life. Her soul was saved that day because she met a man that we call Jesus, praise God. And he said, go, go. Where are your accusers? I have done, Lord. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. The lady at the well, she had five husbands and checking up with a guy. But she had a divine encounter that day. He didn't say that you're a sinner woman. You don't amount to anything. I'm going to tell you what. As soon as that woman got touched by God, she went to town talking about this man that's got to be the Messiah. Amen. The first evangelist in the Bible was a woman, praise God. The first evangelist. Women have an importance in the church today. The first evangelist was a woman, praise God. And the reason why she was able to have those men come and they believed because of her testimony is what the Word of God said. Because she had something within her she didn't have before. She came seeking water, but then she got this water, brother dear, that was water. living water. Yes, praise yeah, God. Amen. There was a difference in her life. Yeah, living water, Lord. Come on. But now, what would his disciples have done because of their religious background? What would they have done? In fact, some of the thoughts were these. Why is he talking to this lady? Yep. Yeah, Why is the master talking to this lady? She's a Samaritan. Samaritan. She's a dog. Why is he even wasting time on her? And rumors has it that she's living with a guy and had five ex-husbands. But here's the thing to take from this. She didn't have to go through weeks or months or years of going to any Bible college or Bible school. But in the moment, God changed her. In a moment, God changed her. When someone gets saved or they rededicate their life to the Word, dedicate their life to God, we need to accept that and accept them right. as a child of God. Sometimes we have reservations because we're human. I have people always do this. They just rededicate their life. Do you, do you think they're okay now? Do you, are, are, are they and my answer to that is say, Lord, 
What should I say? And he tells me to say this. I'm not the judge. I'm not the judge, yeah. And if they say that everything's okay, we have to we have to accept it for that until they yeah. prove otherwise. How many times should you forgive your brother? Seven times seven, seven, seven. seven. Should I forgive him seven times? And Jesus, no, seven times seventy. Uh -huh. But Lord, every time he comes, he says he's sorry, he does the same thing again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh-huh. And we get to the point our flesh goes this, man, he ain't sorry. If he was sorry, he wouldn't have done it the second or third or fourth or fifth time. But the Lord says to forgive him how many times? Seven times seventy. Yeah. You know how many times we've sinned and people have sinned against our Lord and Savior? How many times have you sinned? I'm not talking about going out and committing adultery. I'm not talking about stealing. We sin every day when we deny His compassion, when we deny His love, when we deny Him by reaching out to the lost and those that need it. I would love every backslider that's ever been within our church that no longer is here. I would love and I would welcome this right on Facebook. Come on in. Come on in and renew yourself. Yeah. Come on in. I was a backslider at one time, Brother Tim. Come on in and renew yourself. Because you know what? There's refreshing in the Lord. There's new life in the Lord, praise God. I have to commend our church. I have to compliment our church. Our church, some of them don't like what Mother Mar uh, Brother Mar uh, Sister Mary's doing. Supplying meals to those that are in need. We don't want those kind of people at our church, Mary. That's what some people would say. Our front end of the church looks a mess out there. Man, there's garbage out there, pop cans out there, clothes all thrown all the place, and I'm out there, Mary's out there, some of you, Lori's been out there helping out. You guys have been out helping out. I mean, we're asking for more help, so it doesn't look as such a mess. But even when it's not a mess, it still looks like a, a mess. But you know how many people get touched and blessed yeah. with that mess? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. You know how many people get touched and blessed? Right. Probably been hundreds now. But some yeah. churches wouldn't have that. I was just told a few months ago, you know what would make your church beautiful? Get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of all that stuff over there. Get rid of all those supplies and just start being the church. And I didn't know how to react. I know how I wanted to react. My blood boiled for a minute. The Lord calmed me down. And I started to say, and I did say it with love, I said, well, we're being led by God. We're doing what the church should be doing. Amen. Amen. Feeding the, the lost with spiritual food, too. Praise God. we got to get rid of the stinking thinking with the filter. Amen. we got to get rid of it. Not everybody in here has a suit on. I don't even have a tie tonight. Shame on me. If I took off my jacket, I would still be the same person. If Brother Tim wore a suit, three-piece suit up here, well, that's out of style. Was it a two-piece suit up here? He'd still be Tim. If he comes in with a pair of jeans, he's still Tim. God looks at what's in here, praise God. What are we doing to show the love of Christ. What are we doing to show the compassion of Christ to the lost out there? I'm not condoning sin. I'm not condoning sin at all. But we still need to love the sinner man or woman. We still need to be receptive to the sinner man or woman. We still need to reach out to the sinner man or woman. And maybe because of his reaching out to the right attitude, they come to realize who Jesus is. They accept him as Lord and Savior. This heart can change. The stony heart yeah, can change, can Brother Charlie. That God starts changing them when they start to realize, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't swear like I was. Maybe I shouldn't watch the movies like I was doing those movies. Maybe I shouldn't be judging the other people, yes. Maybe I shouldn't be dressing the way I'm dressing. Maybe I need to clean up a little bit. I need to clean up not just on the outside, but i got to clean up what's on the inside. And then they start to change. They start to change. I could go on for hours and talk about different things that go on at this church and that church and this church to point out flaws, but then, then I'm in a way condemning myself. I don't like snake talk, so we're not going to do that. But our own church here, we got good people in this church. 
Right. We got Holy Ghost Amen. people Praise in this God. church. You know what? And, and, and some people just need a little helping hand. Some people need an uplifting. Praise God. The Bible tells us to, to bear one another's burdens. The Bible tells us to lift up one another. Yes. The Bible doesn't tell me to kick him when he's down. The Bible doesn't tell me to talk about him when he's down. The Bible doesn't tell me to, to judge him. The Bible tells me to love him. Even if he was an enemy, which he's not, thank God. To love your enemies, to pray for your enemies, to take care of your enemies, praise God. And you know what? Your enemy can become your comrade. Your enemy can become your partner in serving God. I talked about Sister Kim this morning. I knew her before she was serving God as she's doing. And Brother Gary, I wasn't serving God either. She wasn't my enemy. It's just somebody I knew. They're my woman at that time. But praise be to God, 25 years later, Amen. she's serving God. Amen. 25 years later, I'm serving God. Praise God. Mm. Listen to what I'm saying. Mm. 40 years ago and 30 years ago, I was going down to the hills of West Virginia to a place we call Jamboree of the Hills. And we drank all week long and listened to country music all week long. That same person that had the window bagel that I went down with, he's a deacon. Well, no, I take that back. He's an elder in his church now, Mike DeMarco. Here's a man that we used to party hardy with. But you know what? We're still party hardy now, but not in the streets anymore. Not at Jamboree in the Hills. We have a Jamboree going into church right now, praising God Almighty and giving Him glory. Praise God. But at one time, we probably would not have been allowed in certain churches. Thank God there was a church that received him. Thank God there was a church that received me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God there was a church that when I was doing wrong didn't condemn me, but prayed for me, that uplifted me, yes. that welcomed me with open arms even when I wasn't living the life I was living. Did they condone sin? Absolutely not. But they loved the sinner man or woman. Never condone sin, but love the lost. I love my lost daughters. Man, do I love my daughters. As a father would love any of his children. I love the ones that are saved, but I love the lost ones too. And I pray that one day I'll be able to talk to them openly about the Lord and instead of them running from it. I pray that they get delivered from the lifestyle that they're living. I pray, Sister Mary, that your family gets delivered. All our families get delivered from the lifestyle that they're living. But we still love them. Hallelujah. So today, I'm going to just end the message. God's already done what he needed to do earlier with the music, brother. Yeah, he did. But the, the thing is, filter. Have God. Say, Lord, give me that Holy Ghost filter to filter out the garbage and the trash that's trying to come in that I've learned from the past. Yeah. I want to be set free. I don't want to have a critical spirit. I don't want to have a critical spirit of the Sadducees and the Pharisees thinking that we're all that. I want to have the spirit of God Almighty. I want to have the spirit of Jesus Christ. I want to have a Holy Ghost spirit that's going to say, you know what? He still loves me even though I've done something wrong. I know he didn't like it, but he still loves me. I want us to have a spirit where we can take correction. I want to have a spirit that, that we can... Talk to one another. Right. Amen. Instead of, hey, don't talk to me, I already know it. <laughs> don't share anything with me, I already know it. I know where you're going with it. I don't I know it all. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, Pat. I know it all. <laughs> Tim, don't cover that with me. I I I read it. I know it. What do you do with somebody like that? Just pray for them. Sometimes as pastor of this church, I have to say, if something is wrong and is contrary to the word of God, I try to do it with grace. Sometimes my grace may seem hard at times, but I try to do my best to let God guide me. But if somebody is saying something wrong to what we're preaching, what we're teaching, that has to be rectified. That has to be adjusted. So when I bring that out to somebody's attention, it's not that I'm 
better than them is not that I'm pointing fingers at them, right. is to say, hey, this is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. God has given us all spiritual blessings. He's given us the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. He's given me Holy Ghost power. Amen. Oh, yes. The Bible says he's, he already has given me, listen to this, he's also given me revival in my soul. Mm -hmm. He's also given me the anointing, 1 John, 2nd chapter, the anointing. I already have received it. And you know what? You have too if you acknowledge it. But if you never acknowledge it, you'll never receive it. Right. Believe what God has already done for you. Glory. Believe what he's already given to you. The same faith that we came to the altar and gave our heart to the Lord, that same power, that same spirit that drew us is living in us today. Glory. Romans 8, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside the believer. Glory. We always talk about going to heaven, but we don't want to talk about all the blessings that we can have right now. Right now, all the blessings that's already here. Health. Peace. Patience. Joy. Happiness. We can already have it here. Amen. Love. And if you don't have it, just ask God for it. Praise God. But anyhow, the reason why I'm talking about this, uh, Don, uh, some things that you had brought up in Bible study, how certain people dress and how they behave yeah. in church and this and that. We have to have filters on. Put the filters on. It's like the Amish. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting down the Amish. I'm going to say this. If somebody wants to live that lifestyle because they want to, if they want to dress like that because they want to, guess what? That's okay. But when someone says you have to dress a certain way, you got to do this, or you got to do that. Those are traditions of man. Not God. Mm -hmm. So when someone brings up something to me, I remember this 10 years ago, I had a pastor. He just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders and walked away. I said, where does it say that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we've always done in church. Where does it say that in the Bible? We've always done it that way. Where does it say it in the Bible? I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm leaving. Uh -huh. es verdad. Es true. If they can't point it out in the Bible, mm -hmm. then they shouldn't be pointing it out in church. Amen. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I'm not a scholar at all. But what I preach, I can show you everything that I preach in the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. That I'll always make a point before I bring it out. We tape every word that's ever said for the last three or four years. When we go back, everything I will verify through the Word of God. It may not be what we want to hear because we have our own twist and view of things. But what is God saying? That's right. So let's put the filters on to filter out all the old thinking. Let's have a church of, hey, you're lost, come on in. Come as you are. If you need fed, we'll feed you physical food. But you know what? If you need fed spiritual food, come on in. They may not have an understanding of what you're talking about. But I pray that one day they will have an understanding of that. Show the love of Jesus Christ. Let's not talk about one another. Let's love one another, praise God. Let's lift up one another, praise God. Let's not kill our wounded. When we have a wound, we're all soldiers in God's army. There's only one fight to fight. And it's the only one mentioned in the Bible. And Paul wrote it. It's called the good fight of faith. Yeah. Yeah. The good fight of faith. Yeah. He talks about his famous yeah. soldier. And we are a soldier in God's God. army. But when we get a wounded one, you know what? we got to be like the Marines and say, you know what? No man left behind. That's right. We need to get our, our, our wounded women. We need to get our wounded men and say, let's drag them along with us. Let's pull them along with us. Let's pray for them. Let's lift them up. But let's not kick them to the curb. Let's not kill them. Let's not throw them out. Praise God. I want us to have that kind of church. Amen. I believe that's the kind of church that Jesus had 2,000 years ago. And even though we're going to try to do that, we're still going to fall. We'll still fail at times. But I want to pray that, Lord, just keep me on the right track. Keep my brothers and sisters on the right track. Let us have a love and a compassion 
of those that are lost. Let us have a love and compassion to those that aren't doing right. Because there was one that had a compassion on me when I wasn't doing right. Amen. There was one that had compassion on me when I was doing wrong. Amen. There was one that had compassion on me when I was a backslider. There was one that had compassion on me my entire life, and I never realized it. Yeah. And his name is Jesus, yeah. and he is the Christ, the Messiah. Thank Praise you, God. Jesus. He's my King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he's yours too. <laughs> let's be more like that. Let's have, let's have a heart of that. Yeah. It's going to be a lot easier to get along with people then. They may not want to get along with you, but that's all right. Some church people may want to get along with you. That's all right. What does the Bible say? If you talk to them, you go to their house, and they don't receive you, uh -huh. pick off the dust and yep. move on. Yeah. Got to go. Got to go. Amen. 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 Will you all stand tonight? Praise God. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah.